and like the thing is is like you you you're, you're we're telling these girls to stay active we're giving them workouts it's like yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yikes. So what's up, Bill? Yeah, uh, we we just gonna talk. It's not, you know, you know how we do. It's not you no know, uptight interview, but absolutely. Yeah. So what is this? So I love how it looks like it's CNN breaking news, bro. <laughs> like I don't know what you be doing and how creative like you get during quarantine. I'm just like, man, check this this one out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been just been creating, man. It's it's crazy, but I don't know. I just got tired of watching, you know, regular news, and it's you know the same thing. So I'm just trying to bring some positivity to it. So it's, it's a definitely a strange time, I think, for a lot of things. Yeah. It's very strange. But how are you keeping up? I'm all right. Like you know, I'm doing video editing. So I'm like used to work from home, but it's just like I You're like mandated. Yeah, like I like being on the move. Like I don't like being in the house like this. But I, I'm alright. I'm appreciating like just chilling for real. Like I need to chill. So yeah, I think um, like I think one thing that COVID has has brought is basically a pause that a lot of people needed and um right at, in the beginning like and I, I don't think people are quite appreciating the fact that we needed this pause but yeah. eventually it'll show like like all right even though it's crazy and we're on lockdown they're talking about a curfew our kids aren't going to school money is not being made but like just yeah. to appreciate the lesser things I guess to so to speak so yeah. you know having this pause and we're always busy and like you said like we're always creating or we're always doing something and we're just we're busy 24 7 where we just need to have a have that pause and, and decompress but it's hard to appreciate that right now for sure for sure so like I know you said AAU I know you coached the team Durant like how has this impacted you like you know what I'm saying like how have you been taking it like okay so about Team Durant. So this is my second going to my second season. So my my second year with them. Yeah. Um, and I was coaching alongside um Cabria. And you know, that was like that was an experience last year. Um, just kind of seeing what we did all our lives. Mm-hmm. And now it's like 360 and here we are. Like here we are and now we're coaching these little kids and we were just them about yeah so many so many moons ago but um so this year they were able to um ask me to be the seventh grade head coach so like it I was just like oh my god like yeah heck yeah like yeah like I love kids like I think there's no there's no other age group that I'd rather coach and I say this with a light heart because I love my high school babies but you get to still nurture them like they're still sponges like in in hindsight they're they're not trying to compete against anybody but themselves and just want to just take out all the juices from from the fruits that are given yeah so they made me the head coach and I'm I was excited boy it was literally our tryout was the week before they they had the lockdown and they shut down yeah so then it turned into like, oh my God, okay, two weeks, we're going to be on lockdown, bet. Like, we already have gracefully the St. James out of Virginia where we get to practice, but then like, I'm like, man, I'm feeling good. Like, I'm getting connections to to have practice in in these high schools and and middle schools, and then boom, we're shut down. Yeah. So I was, you know, consistently like, you know, planning and planning and planning until the two week was over and then we get to the extension. Mm. So then what I thought was only going to be really temporary, now it's long standing. And so having Zoom calls and kind of missing that that personal one on one because I'm I'm very like intimate and physical, yeah. right? I need to be in order for me to feel like I'm impacting somebody, like I have to be there. Right. I'm arms distance away. Mm-hmm. And so 
not being able to be around the girls um, and, and teaching them. And I'm so excited. Like I had like a whole book of like practice plans yeah. and the, the, the toughest thing to do now mm-hmm. or the less like to stay motivated and just continue the plan. Mm. And, but we not, we don't know what we're planning to do. Right. Like we, don't, we don't know when we're going to be able to do anything. So it's just like trying to keep my spirits up and just, staying ready yeah it's been it's been tough though it's been tough like i don't know like what what are your thoughts just the future like after when this is all done and now we can go it's gonna take some time but like what do you think how it's gonna be all right (laughs) (laughs) i feel like we are probably gonna have to continue social distancing for a while and just how like the people are talking like people who who are scientists are saying these things like we're gonna have to practice I think how that's gonna affect athletes in general and not just speaking about basketball but opportunities Mm -hmm. are are gonna I feel like are gonna shrink because it's great to have great company and rapport with people where they could sit there and give you the word of mouth right Mm -hmm. to a coach or something like that Mm -hmm. um but then when you get there they're not that total package so then it's just like Mm -hmm. if we look on the business side like I invested in this kid Mm -hmm. but could you fault that kid because this whole entire summer was on a lockdown right and they weren't able to perform or be on that platform where they can really show you how to go and again we've been social distancing you know not having that competitiveness with the opponent it it kind of takes a way of getting better and learning through your mistakes Mm -hmm. so you know just moving forward um, for our young ones um it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough in terms of opportunities um being sought out professionally it's gonna hurt a lot of people because yeah. if we can't move in our in our state, in our area, in our community the way we would like, those people who work their butt off so hard, like for like going through college and then having that opportunity to go overseas and now it's being at a halt. I didn't even think about that. Yo, like that's what I'm saying. And it's just like, God, like I, yeah, that's. I've worked. I, it's sad to say that some 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 people like work so hard just right. to get to that point. Yeah, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. And damn, I didn't even think about that. That man, I was going through it for three months. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I graduated in 2016. I finally wrote a deal a year after I graduated. Yeah, yeah like. The grind is real. The weight is real. It's, it's tough. And that's when everything was normal. Like, like you could you could appreciate the grind because you know that that opportunity is going to be there. True. But then, you you let's say we're in the situation that we were trying to do when we first graduated, mm-hmm. and now we get hit with this. It's just like. I'm I'm going I'm grinding, but then I can't really grind because I can't even go to no court. Yeah. So what am I grinding for? Like like I I did this for twelve plus years, and now this opportunity is about to fade away. Like I'm pissed. Right. I'm pissed. Right. It's sad. Yeah. But like, but all right. So how did you? How were you able to stay motivated, knowing that that opportunity was there? Right. Right but it took some time to get there. Like, how did you stay motivated? Well, the biggest thing, like, what they can do right now, I was just around people that motivated me, like, that were motivating. Like, at that time in my life, I was doing uh, Herbalife, right? Mm-hmm. Or the Fit Can, stuff like that. But it was it was dope because they were positive. They was like, go after your dreams, go after, you know, chase your goals, whatever that is. So I always worked out with people who were going after the same thing that were trying to. Right. So it was easy. Like it wasn't easy, but it made it like 
you know, easier on my mental and like, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I sitting around wondering, man, when am I gonna get that call? Cause I was around other people in the same boat. So that's, that's what helped me get through it for real. So like, like if you were to have that advice, like, okay, you have your story, but what advice would you give to those, those kids that's facing this, this type of situation? Man. I don't even know. Like, I really got to think about that because I'm still speechless on this. Like, um, the only advice I would give them, I think it's important. I know it's only so much you can do virtually, but you do need some, some kind of accountability. Like, you need a trainer. You need a coach. Like, if, you're, if your parent can, you know what I'm saying, like, hire, uh -huh. hire that trainer that can stay on top of you, like do it because you're not gonna do it by yourself right now like you're just not like you're not like it's it's tough it's it's tough I think the biggest part of it is staying motivated yeah like I think this put the whole world unknown but now what I what it's probably hard for somebody that's that's probably not even gonna be able to walk across the stage just to get their degree but the biggest thing for them is now you got to start, you know, when they say that the, when the basketball stops dribbling, real life, like the ball's going to stop. Yeah. And now you got to execute, like, yes, your greatness. And, and, you know, you've worked so hard to a dream, to a basketball, right? Mm -hmm. But when that ball stops dropping, you yeah. got to, you got to understand, you got to start kicking in gears that you probably didn't even think you had to, had to use. Yeah. but it's that time now yeah. and so if it's any advice that I could give to like you know female hoopers that are about to graduate in efforts of trying to go overseas it's like work on the other creative parts of your life mm -hmm. like we could admire Taylor Brown because yes her identity was basketball mm -hmm. but then look you're doing media yeah. you know what I'm saying you're interviewing like you're getting the world connected in it through a camera mm. so it's just like you got to tap into your creativity and that's that's a challenge that you know in hindsight when we were trying to go overseas right. we had to force to do and now it's just like you have the opportunity to still do all that you can so when that opportunity opens up to go overseas but then both while we're chasing that now you got to work and tap into other things. You got to maybe send that resume. You maybe you got to sharpen the resume. Right. So. Yo, that, that's deep. That's real. That's, that's so real. It's, it's deep, man. It, this, like, and when they say, like, it's more than just basketball, it's more than just basketball. Yeah. yeah. Man, like, I don't even know. Like, just what do you think in general – like, have you, I'm pretty sure, like, you've been out, like, in groceries, or have you been, like, door dashing, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like, <laughs> I am not door dashing, for one, and, and I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not doing that, first of all, I did it when, I did it before the quarantine, because I was lazy, <laughs> but now, you don't know who got it, because I could guarantee you, everybody's not getting tested for this, yeah, Unless you're feeling achy and you're coughing a little bit more, like whatever the symptoms is, mm -hmm. like you're not going to check yourself out. Yeah. So a 20, a 25 year old is doing door dashing. Respect the hustle. I respect the hustle. But we don't know if they got it. Like, of course, they got to have the mask and the gloves. But then, like, you know, who to say the cookers are like, you don't know <laughs> this thing. Like, no. And then I found out that people like I think it's an app um called cur curbside or well yeah. it's some app that people can do grocery shopping right and someone like you and me do, do the actual shopping mm -hmm. and then take it I can't trust it Not can't just, trust it bro can't trust it no Uber Eats no Pizza Hut delivery <laughs> I've saved and this is really bad, but I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. I've saved so much money mm, yeah. going to the grocery store yeah. and just cooking 
And yeah. mind you, like, let's keep it 100. If you not know chef, yeah. like, you cook it the basic of the basic, but even then, I think, like, in the season of quarantine and COVID is to appreciate, you can appreciate the fact that I would eat baked chicken five times a day than mm-hmm. rather spend $20 three days out of the week mm-hmm. for stuff that I could have, I could have just surely mm-hmm. avoided. So, yeah, that's definitely. Have you been cooking? Yeah, I've been cooking a lot. And like, I went vegan. I don't know if I told you that. And like, um, uh-uh. yeah, so before I was just going to like the vegan restaurants and I was <laughs> back up for the week (laughs) yes spending crazy money now i'm cooking like (laughs) goose and mushrooms and and it's easy i'm like i could have been doing this taking my lunch everywhere i went like this is crazy like i'm telling you i'm telling you it's different it's different it's definitely different yeah i'm sitting I'm creative. Like I used to just buy a salmon, and, and you know that be just that. Like salmon, put the seasoning, and then glaze it with honey. Right? That would be the thing. Yeah. I'm sitting here making salmon Alfredo. Like I'm getting all creative. Like just the stress of the fact that no matter that, hey, right. We gotta do it because I'm I'm still I'm like scared to even like eat out. Like I'm not scared because yeah. Like the other day, I ordered like a chicken sandwich from Roman Roosters. Like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that sometimes. But knowing the money that I'm I'm spending and knowing and like kind of seeing it change my body, even mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's it's definitely a lit transition. Like, like that same money. Um, I, I'm like, dang, like I don't, I hate the drive to be honest. So um, now I realize, what's the point of a car? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you be door dashing. You yeah. a door dasher? I, I Uber eats. I Uber eat, but we only okay. eat like two times, and it was Chipotle. <laughs> so vegan. Yeah. Oh my god! All right, I couldn't only because. I've tried vegan food and I wasn't even aware that it was vegan. I thought it was chicken tenders. Okay. Like, cause like you can manipulate food. Right. I was eating tofu. Oh yeah. And I was, I was like, I'm, I'm crushing. I'm mm. like, this is really good. Like, where'd you get these chicken tenders from? <laughs> they were like, um, this is tofu. Like what you're eating is the breaded, but inside it's tofu. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> but like, how is that? Like, I, I feel like it's fake food. So enlighten me, please. Okay, so I don't eat tofu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, I don't. That's the one thing I hate. But um, I eat everything like vegetables. Couscous is like my rice. I mean, rice is fine. Um, but I eat hella mushrooms like I love mushrooms and that's like kind of like the the meat for me which is weird Mm -hmm. and then like tomatoes blueberries stuff like that so I just eat it all the time because like my metabolism is so fast um and then almond milk I drink almond milk because if I don't have that then I want like ice cream and stuff like that so Mm. yeah um it's not bad almond milk be lasting huh Almond milk lasts for a very long time. It does. And, like, it's to the point, like, because I, I will tell you this, though, like, because, you know, I'm I, I'm still, like, at home, whatever, and my mom be, like, cooking chicken and stuff. So, you know, when I try to eat a piece of chicken, I get sick, like, instantly. Like, mm. I mean, my, say, like, my stomach's are hurting, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. So that's, like, when new, like, okay, I, I can do this, you know? So, how long you been vegan? Since December, so this is probably like going on five months. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. So did you just go rogue and like just went cold turkey on the meats? Like going cold turkey on turkey? Like how does this happen? Like so, my mentor took me to. You ever heard of Everlasting Life? Mm-mm. I never told nobody this, but 
actually worked, started working there like part time because I wanted to like learn more about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I only worked there for like a few days. <laughs> Oh, 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 but oh, oh. Nah, for real, I like sign up, bro, and uh, and then all they do is serve is all vegan based food, plant based. So like they say, they call it drumsticks, but it's not really chicken. It's just like whatever they made it out of. And then they had like mac and cheese. Then they have all mm-hmm. the and all that. So that inspired me, like, oh, I can do this. I just gotta tell myself, like. It's chicken, but it's not like you know. What I'm saying? It's steak, but it's not. manipulation, boy, manipulation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's what I did. Like every day, like I just bought vegan food for the week, and I was good. I was heating the microwave. <laughs> that was it. So it's like crazy now. I'm cooking what I was like, you know, buying, but it's not that bad. Like once you. I guess it's a mental thing, like you said, manipulating. Like once you like <laughs> replace it, like oh no, nah, this is this is it, but not really. Like it's not bad. I can respect it. I um, and you know we're talking freely. Yeah. Like the power of changing your diet for the greater good, right? So I did mine off of an experiment. Like mm-hmm. you know, I'm 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 into fitness and I love working out. I love the feeling. But then it's just like what people, I mean, nowadays, because this is like the new, the new era of fitness, everybody is, is, is being aware now. And I love it here, but you know, prior to like, you know, just regular gym goers and and fitness people, we can say we go to the gym, but what we put in our bodies and then there's no type of like benefit of you going to the gym five times a week because of what you choose to put in your body. So I realized that. So then, um, because in my head in college, we could eat, we could go to the calf off yeah. the late night tip right. and be good for practice and be, and just be like, wow, like we're, we're still in shape. Right. But don't go like that. Kids. If you're watching this, <laughs> It's not the same. I'm telling you, it's not the same. When you when you graduate, boy, everything hits harder. <laughs> it's different. But I say that to say I try to, you know, the pescatarian diet. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. It was real cool. Like, I saw, like, my body, you know, yeah. change it for the greater good. <laughs> but then, you know, as females, we go through something every month. Right. Right. And it was my time of that month. And I, at, like, obviously, like, I'm conscious of, of knowing what's going on in my body. Yeah. But you couldn't tell me I was on my, at that time, because I didn't cramp. Mm. I didn't feel bloated. No. So it's just like, oh, I could do this. Yeah. And then I told myself I was going to be a pescatarian for a month. <laughs> so I went through the whole month. I was like, okay, I could do it for another month. And my mom cooked some, some fried chicken my favorite (laughs) filipino dish and it was over over so yes it is it is the thought process is it is the thought process but it's beneficial so i wouldn't mind going pescatarian for another month but lifestyle change Uh -uh. (laughs) i love my 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 turkey ground my ground turkey uh tacos i love it i love it there yeah oh man that's funny. I feel like you could talk about that for hours. About food. I'm telling you, because I'm a fat chick. No. Nah. In real life. No, nah, not even. But, I don't know, like, what else? Like, I was, you know, I talked to, like, Jasmine and a couple other athletes coming from overseas, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. coming back home, and I don't know, man. Like, it's just weird how, like, sports is, like, I mean, everything's shut down, but everybody just replaying old games and stuff like that and it's, I don't know like ESPN probably won't be shown for a minute like what's it a show after a while so I think sports helps the world go around like whether you're an athlete or whether you just like watching athletes mm-hmm. or you or that's some type of shared moment you have with your family and experience or whatever I feel like sports is needed but with that being said I can understand why it's it it 
it, it kind of, everything is postponed or canceled or whatever the case may be yeah. because the world can now like you can see how the world is affected by it not being any sports mm-hmm. and if you take all those all those people you don't know who got what and right. now you got a whole community of just somebody wanting to enjoy sports and now it's it it could possibly that's scary yeah it's scary um so i was hearing and, and i don't know how true it is but you know we're still planning basketball i don't know if it's just basketball but we're just like for grassroots and high school like the show must continue regardless if it's postponed so we're still planning for like july okay um and you know you know you have the under armor circuit uh adidas has the gauntlet mm-hmm. obviously you know nike mm-hmm. is it doesn't matter if it's EYBL, Elite, whatever the case may be, like right. they're gonna have their stuff. So we're continuing to just just to plan for it. But what I was hearing from a couple of coaches actually, they're gonna put a a limit to it's like a pair a, a player and a parent. It's not gonna be the player and the, their family. Okay. And so I wanna see like how how that's gonna work how that dynamic is going to look. So say, for instance, you have your family, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you will go. And, you know, your kid might play two games, three games a day sometimes. Yeah. So it's just like now you and your partner are like kind of going back and forth. Like, all right, you go to this 2 o'clock game. Then they have a little break. All right, you could go to the 5 o'clock game. Mm-hmm. And then let's let's coin flip to see who's going to go to the third game like you know that's just it's crazy to think that's how things are possibly going to be and that's that's weird (laughs) very weird weird. have you been watching the commercials on tv and everything's like COVID 19 but they like really show like the city of you know new york it's just quiet like it's, it's it's crazy like and then they, if they do a snapshot of the DMV, we're still going. We, we don't, where are we going actually? Cause I was just on, I was on 495 a day. Like, where are we going? Like, why are we almost in damn near traffic? Like, where are we going? But yeah. I'm interested to know mm-hmm. how does that play an effect for crimes? Mm-hmm. Decrease? in crimes I don't know COVID COVID is showing a lot of a lot of stuff that we probably as individuals haven't been able to tap in yeah but it's also saving a few lives mm. here here and there um but you know to, to, to spin it back on on sports I mean how much can the world rotate without sports yeah like it's, it's like, like pretty quiet. <laughs> Very like I don't know, like talk about the, the crime rate. That's that's a really good point because it was some posts, it's like all over, but it was like there hasn't been a, a school shooting since this all started, like for a month, since two thousand four or something like that. I don't that's know. That's a crazy statistic. Yeah. It's crazy. So that's that's a great point. And I don't know, like this it's like you gotta think about it everybody's situation is different though and that's where like my heart goes out to like just people i don't even know whatever they're going through it's like not everybody probably has like a good situation like us you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. like, i don't know you know what i'm saying like kids they don't like to go home you know what i'm saying maybe they're going home to abuse or whatever we'll never know right now i don't know you know what i'm that's saying that's scary yeah but then like you know you going back to what you're saying about like abuse and stuff like that's that's one thing that I love about being a teacher and a coach because mm. you you're able or I think what makes a successful person or an advocate for the youth is not just saying you're doing your job but loving your job enough to understand a kid I think you know, and this is an essay that I was writing to this program. Um, and the question was, what motivates you to 
um, to be so so into education and how can you foresee yourself bettering um, these students' lives? Mm. And it, it comes down to one simple thing. And, and it, now, now it does. But it probably has always has been. But for me now, being an educator and a coach, you really got to know a kid. Mm. Because a kid to do one or two things. You don't have to tell them anything. They're going to get the job done. God bless those kids. Mm. But then you have kids that they got to trust you nowadays. Trust yeah. is a big thing. If they don't trust you, their block goes up. Oh, yeah. And maybe and maybe that's stuff that has to go at home. Or maybe that's, you know, just simply them not being able who to trust around because of how the world turns out to be. But I love speaking to kids, not even about the X and the O's or how many apples are there and then how, you, how many you take away. Now, what are you left? Like, it's not always about that. Like, I think education and coaching go hand in hand because you got to know a kid to teach the kid, one, to right. keep the kids engaged. And then for them to really understand, it's like a three-part process, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they got to they gotta believe what you're saying. They got to believe that you care. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And I I just and you know, to speak on to speak on, you know, what you're saying about, you know, we don't ever know what goes on in a kids' lives and a kids daily life. And you know, how's that affecting them in COVID? As an educator, it gotta hurt you. Mm-hmm. Or even a coach, like it has to hurt you mm-hmm. because maybe that's your kids' getaway. Right. Um and we I know for you and for me yeah. basketball was was that thing that we didn't worry about anything it wasn't nothing you couldn't tell we could have got whooped I know for me I was a bad kid back in the day <laughs> I got I remember I got in trouble in school and I was reprimanded by my mother and I had practice my butt and my butt was on fire, but mm-hmm. I had to get in that squad and defense right. and I had to bust my butt and I forgot I even got in trouble. Thanks. And it's just like, these kids don't have it, have that right now. Wow. So wow. that hurts. That's the thing that hurts. And not to say like every kid's, sorry. Are you good? Every kid's situation is like that, but it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, man, like, you brought some really good points. Like, so, as a coach, right, an educator, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what advice would you give to other coaches that, you know, are having a hard time with this? Like, I I guess I can say college coaches, like, trying to recruit, you know, there's probably, like, rules and restrictions to that now or just not be able to -to face-to-face and – or just like in general, what advice would you give another coach? I guess like was in your shoes, you know what I'm saying? Starting out and then this happened or everything was coming together and then this happened. Like, you know, what advice would you tell them? Um I think as a coach, um, you gotta you gotta know again, going back to the point of knowing your kid. Mm-hmm. Like knowing who, who impact or who life you're about to impact. Um, so now, if I could say this to anything, all we can do right now, like you and me, can watch. Yeah. Say, for instance, I am recruiting you, or you're about to play on my high school team. Yeah. Now, because social media is so open, I got I get to see who your character is, mm-hmm. who you really are. So I think. For coaches is obviously um, to stay connected with your kids, one, yeah. but now step outside of coach mode and really pay attention to who your kid is. Because as you could look at it from a different way, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, you're a coach. You want to, you think that you're a superhero, like you're a superwoman or a superman and you think you could save lives. Right. But if a kid doesn't want to be saved, now you got to protect you yourself as a coach. Like, do yeah. I, okay, I know what this kid may be going through. Right. I could possibly change their life, but can I change if they don't want to be changed? Like, there's an opportunity in this sense. 
where it's a partnership where I could hope to only get you to the places you want to want to go and where you and who you want to become and I could give you you know as much wisdom as I can mm. but then I see you doing everything opposite of what you're saying like like this is this is a time where you're seeing true colors true I don't want because I'm responsible not only for one lives when I'm with the company of my team I'm responsible for many lives and if you're sitting here, you smoking and you getting a high at the age of 16, I can't have you on my team mm -hmm. and be around kids who really want to be a part of it. And 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 maybe that's that sounds bad to some, but that's true. Yeah. No. Because it's it's tough. And then you gotta show that tough love. So honest to God, like the only thing, if you're a college coach, like obviously I can't speak on that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But for, but for us, because we have a, a chance to help kids elevate to get, to hopefully get an opportunity to be seen, but now we have to pay attention to our kids because sometimes, and it's going to get a little bit deeper, like sometimes they're trying to tell somebody something. Mm -hmm. Right. And you got to, you got to pay attention, like you got to play that role, like you, you got to be a psychologist sometimes, you got to be. You gotta be a parent that they never had, a sister or brother that they never had. So it's like you gotta dissect your play. You gotta dissect. It becomes more than them just being mm. player to you. Like if you, if, but that's only. Now I'm saying it for the people that only thinks. If if you just want to coach, just yeah. to say you coach, okay, cool. Then you're not gonna feel what I'm saying. Right. But right. If you're really trying to impact kids' lives, which I hope all. All coaches do. Yeah or that's the goal thing yeah, you got to You got to sit back and you got to, you got to analyze your kid because mm -hmm. it's out, out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that just brings a, another, another topic. We're young. Mm -hmm. I'm, this is, this is my gracefully walking in my fourth year coaching. Okay. Um, and I can tell you, and I know there's like a stigma going around with the the men in our area about who's the best, and I want to see this matchup and this matchup. Yeah. And that's real. That's old school basketball, right? That's the basketball that we grew up, and that's the basketball that 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 competitiveness. Right. So when we were being competitive as kids, we didn't realize what adults were doing. And now that I'm kind of in that world, I question whether coaches are like grassroots coaches and high school coaches are really for the kids or just to say that they got a kid because, mm. and I say that because there's so many different avenues that these kids have mm. to just kind of expand, you know, their athletic ability. Mm -hmm. And with that type of kid, if you're a five-star kid, bring some type of audience crowd yeah. to your program. And now, you bring that audience and that crowd and that five star. Now you're getting, as a coach, you're getting opportunity to now play on the biggest stage. Right now, if we talk about Nike, you have EYBL. Mm -hmm. So now you you have this this kid. Now you coaches are coming to your games. Now you're on a platform such as the the Nike EYBL. Mm -hmm. And then, the coach, are you doing it just to say you had that kid, or you really are nurturing that kid? Like I, it's hard for me to to question that like it, I, it's hard for me to believe that some of these coaches out here are really are really out here yeah. for those reasons yeah i'm sorry to get deep no on you real that's quick. Just, you're getting real interesting like so when i ask you about that since you're like in the aau market um i mean i'm what i've seen i'm pretty sure like the durant program looks amazing like you guys like have it down pat but <laughs> I want to talk about honestly, like, um, you know, the big name, the big brand AAU companies like Fairfax Stars, Blue Williams, like, you know, even I play for Blue, whatever. And then, you know, like the Lady Turks, like, or uh, what is it, Team XL, teams that don't really have that name brand. But yeah, just like the differences with that, you know, but because I had this conversation with my coaches, um, you know, at Flower all the time, like, that team, like the Lady Turps, I can say this for myself, 
if I didn't play for them my sophomore year, that, that sophomore summer or whatever, bro, I probably wouldn't have been as, like, you know, good as I was, like, because I got to play. And, like, I was – it was just a perfect fit, like, for me to just work on my game, you know what I'm saying? And say mm-hmm. if I went straight to boo, I wouldn't have got that experience. So, you know what I'm saying? I probably would have been on the bench and got it in practice. But it's just, like, I don't know. And maybe that goes down to the best fit for you. But I just want to talk about what are the differences and, you know, like – playing for a big name brand AU team and then like AU team that's like local you know what I'm saying or like doesn't mm-hmm. have that status name you know what I'm saying so yeah so all right so I have like literally like I'm I'm grateful to like have my rookie AU coaching season with a program um such as as team Durant yeah and you know a lot of people may or may not know but like we're still new to this, like that's true. As for the for the for the girls program at least, like, yeah. like we're walking in year three and establishing and I feel like we're just starting to every like people are starting to pay attention to the program, which is great. Mm. Right. But then like you said, I played for Lady Terps and I played on my soft I think it was my sophomore in, in high school it was my sophomore year. Yeah. I I believe so. Coach Rob, shout out to Coach Rob. Yeah. Um, I've always been a kid that 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 humbly loves talking about. Like I say, humbly loves talking about because Lady Terps is not funded. Like we're we're like it wasn't Nike affiliated. I don't even think we we had anything on our jerseys. It was just Lady Terps. Yeah, you wore your own shoes. We had the same shoes. Was- <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. But again, it doesn't matter. Like, now it matters. Then it didn't matter who you played for because if you were good and you had a good situation going for you, like that, like I said, when we talk about crowds, that they're just going to come. Those opportunities are going to begin to, to, you know, have for itself. Yeah. But then when you talk about these established programs that has – the status, like Fairfax Star, Boo Williams. You got, you know, we're getting talked about Team Durant, mm-hmm. right? Team Takeover. Um, all these, all these strong programs that are backed up. The only difference is, is that they're backed up by a brand. Mm-hmm. If if you take away the brand, are you really gonna get all those players that you say that you're gonna get? Are you gonna get those top ranked players? Like you really gotta ask yourself. Like it's a, a an elite branding situation when you got Nike backing you up you're playing on on black courts mm-hmm. we, was, we was like we was like if you were if you were Lady Turp or anything less than like okay I'm not gonna say less than but if you're not on that that stature like you're not gonna be gifted no black courts I never I shit I'm sorry to curse but shit I never played on no black courts and I played and and I was able to play on a big enough stage with with players who were that right right and I played in the number one program like yeah it but I think to get those type of kids and it sucks for the programs that aren't funded by these brands Mm -hmm. that's the difference yeah because nowadays kids care about gear Mm -hmm. they care about what they look like like the image matters it matters whereas it never did, but it matters now. So a kid going to have the opportunity to play for a Nike team or an Under Armour team, for sure, you're going to get the best of the best because that's what a kid wants. Right. You saying that they're going to get book bags? We're going we gonna to get silk jerseys? We're not going to get the baggy joints, the hand-me-downs? Like, right. I'm here for it. And right. it's just, a, again, you're going to attract those five-star players. Like, there's some programs. I know Boo Williams is one where you're getting a kid, a couple of kids from out of state where they just come, where they just come. Right. I eat you. <laughs> you drive a four hour slip to go to practice or to spend a week, you know, in Virginia just to practice for a tournament that you're about to have. Like crazy, crazy, craziest thing. But it's so like, those are like, when you're, when you were put in those situations, when we were growing up, like that was like special. Yeah. That wasn't to say like like yeah, I play for Boo like I'm the sugar honey iced tea. No. 
Like that's just a, that's like going to make people around your way want to grind out harder. Like you can be on that type of platform. Whereas now it's, it's, you're not, you're not necessarily hand, hand picking your players because they're just going to come to you. They're going to flop where you say the best of the best is. But Boo is, Boo, I could say one thing about Boo, like he still hand picks his kids. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. That's, that's very true because that's how I got it. It was very hand picked. <laughs> You're right though. Like, and you're so right. It's, so it was like, I think back then it was like, around the area, it was it was literally just Fairfax and Boo yeah. that was backed up now. by that good old check sign. <laughs> whoosh. And you have, and but then you see, like, you have these great players mm-hmm. that still come from the, the not-so-funded programs. Mm-hmm. And it's hard now for, for kids. It's hard for coaches. It's hard for coaches to get those type of players out because you're not backed up by a brand. Unfortunately. That is, <laughs> that's sad, actually, because that's what made, I think, our time so good. The talent was spread out. So, I mean, there was games like, okay, yeah, if you play Fairfax Stars, it wasn't like, oh, we about to get blown out. We about to get them a fight. Like, it's a mm-hmm. close game. They win, they're going to win by five points, not 20. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not at all. Yeah. It's different. Like, now. Bellway Lady Cougars. Yeah. Man, the real real ones know about Bellway Lady Cougars. Like, oh, yeah. Team Excel. Like, everybody come- started with Team Excel. <laughs> like, come on now. You know what? You know what's crazy to me now? What? We took pride in Boys and Girls Club. I don't even, they skip that. They, like, kids skip that. What is that? True. I had kids, like, ask me, like, Boys and Girls Club, like, the wreck? The wreck, Miss Johnson? Coach, you talking about that? <laughs> no. Nah, that, that was a traveling team. We were traveling within the county. Yeah. And we would play against the greatest of the greats, like that could truthfully say, like I'm a I'm a lower product. I'm a product of lower boys and girls club. Yeah, I'm still happy that, like I I remember I had to play two two grades up to go to this Salisbury tournament down in in Maryland. Yeah. Some Salisbury, Maryland. We have a banner that I am a. I, I would like to say that I am a part of. Like, what the, I don't care if I was two years younger. I was part of that team. Right. And, Every time I go to, you know, Lower Boys and Girls Club and I see that band, I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep. That that right there. Oh, That's a yeah. this is but what happened to the Boys and Girls Club? They don't even understand like Clinton up in Marlboro's on the front of the jersey. Kettering? <laughs> <laughs> like dang, that's 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 way back in the day. Man, so so, just in the authentic authenticity, I, I can't even say that word. No, it's all right. I can't. Say the that. authentic part of the game, mm-hmm. like starting from from nothing. True. True. So I want to ask you, like, because I I was looking at this magazine, and in the magazine it was like, say, like, uh, I'm just gonna use a filmmaker example. Filmmaker. <laughs> It's first thing in my head. <laughs> like his filmmaker, he has like this mentee, somebody he mentors, and it was like a picture of him and then like his mentee, and he was saying that his mentee is going to be the next him. Like he can see mm-hmm. him the footsteps, and you know he's the same kind of like person. If you could pick one player or one, you know, I guess kid that you're mentoring, or you know, you just have a relationship with that you think that would be the next you. Ooh, we. So, I wouldn't even say like. I wouldn't even say like to be the next me. But I can see like, but I can see like that that authentic grind, right? This is she's a sixth grader. Okay. Demi Marshall. 
All right, yeah, give me a picture, so I'm gonna put it over top. <laughs> Wait, you gotta do oh. it. Now. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, oh, I can name two sixth graders. Okay, the sixth grader Malia out of and and I they're they're proud they're they're proud Durant kids, seventh graders. Yeah. Well, they're on the seventh grade team. Wait, but, so you, you got Malia from Virginia. You know Malia. Yeah, and her she's funny. Now that's now no now I'm not even gonna size it. Her body, her body, uh-huh. her IQ is a little Tay Brown. They just so I have my kids send me what they're doing, like because I give them a workout. Yeah. But then, you know, I want them to be on the court. Yeah. Humbly, Malia. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Cold. She's cold. Like I haven't like when she can't she stood out so much, like her IQ is just next level. Yeah. And she has skill. And she says, Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Like respectful kid. Love her dad. Love her dad or mom. Oh my God, that's great. You're coaching her, yo. That Malia. Oh my god. And then Demi Marshall, she brings that that grit. Right, like, like that, that, that type of grind that that you want, like that we had. Yeah. <laughs> right, but you see that in in her, and these are sixth graders, mm-hmm. right? And again, there's so many kids that I could say, but like, like who I know that's gonna surpass whatever greatness, whatever the way you define my greatness. They're they're literally, oh man. Oh man, class of 2026. That's 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 what when I was in sixth grade, I was in 2006. Oh my god, I'm old. Oh my god, oh, oh. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. They, those are my two, but like if we talk about a kid that that I'm mentoring now that I, I've connected, mm-hmm. um, she's not really talked about um and i say that in the most respectful way yeah um but she's gonna grind her soul out is a uh, zaria gaskins okay like she's like i i just only had short conversations with her yeah. but again she's a point guard that can shoot that can make plays that can draw defenders Mm-hmm. And she's all, I, I maybe speak on a biased standpoint, but like I, I coached middle school basketball, yeah. so that's the thing. Like started coaching middle school basketball, then got into AAU, yeah. Then I progressed into college. I mean, not college, high schools. Ooh, let me not speak that. I don't mind the way. I don't want to coach college. I don't. Okay. I don't. All right, but I got a question about that though. Cause all right, could you see yourself coaching AAU in the end of AAU? Like before, I, <laughs> yo, listen. It was literally. I had a partner in college, uh-huh. where they told me they were like, "Okay, yeah, you're gonna." I could see you doing like basketball clinics or having your own camp, and then coaching. I'm sitting here like to coach somebody like me. Oh no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a whoop my kid. Yeah, because at the, end of the day, like I. Like if you look at yourself in the mirror and you be and you just look and then you just think back to like your younger self. I I was bad. Like <laughs> like and and I'm just like, oh my God, like yeah. a little Dominique. Mm-hmm. No. I did not think about that. I didn't think that I would do it. So then two years later, had a camp and yeah. I, I totally fell in love. Yeah. I totally felt like I, and, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I just, it just happened. Right. I didn't even expect the, the outcome that I had. Right. I, I didn't. So everything was kind of off of the fly. Yeah. But then I knew that if even if I impacted one kid, yeah, I truly believe that I impacted many. Like if only if I touch one, I'm touching a lot of other different kids in different ways. So when we fast forward to now, do I foresee myself just just elevating, like elevated from AU? Yeah. Um, 
I'm 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 gonna stay in the in the in the in the teenager and and kid pool where I can still kind of nurture the kids before they get to the. I think I think the, I think right now that's the thing that's missing. Mm. Like we want these kids to go these places, and we're working tirelessly to make sure that they get to school, but they gotta be nurtured. I'm not saying coddled, but nurtured right. so they can't be ready. Because I could be like um, Maryland. I could be like Towson, Georgetown, George, May, all them, all them schools. Come check out this kid. Yeah. But then, when the kid goes off to college, they they're not self aware of what what might hit them. Facts. And that's the importance of us coaches. Like we really gotta get these kids. It's not just about the X's and O's. You gotta present yourself away because unfortunately, you're gonna be judged. Mm. You're going to be looked at a little bit differently. People are going to dissect you and they're going to try to try to choose your fate for you. If you know who you are, if you believe in who you are and, and trust your process, no one can dictate you. But these kids are easily dictated and manipulated. And it's like they're in a, in a, in a fuzz. Like they just, they don't, they're lost. Mm-hmm. So I think we're important. I think, I think mentorship is really, really good. So no, I don't want to further coaching basketball at a high school level or AAU because it's it's not a business. And in hindsight, like in hindsight, maybe it is a business, mm-hmm. right? Because the parents need a return on their investment. They're investing in you as a parent to help their kids. Right. And it's it's our job to make sure we do well on our return on the investment. But at the same token, when you get into college, and you could agree to it, it's a business at this point. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, mm-hmm. another bus is coming with other kids. Quick. See, we gotta we gotta make sure that those kids are prepared for that. That's the harsh reality of this game. Yeah. There's so many, there's so many more people just like you. What's gonna stand out? How are you gonna stand out? Man. And it's it's you already know, man. The over recruiting. <laughs> you may oh, get love. you can get love one year and then you wonder next year, where did that where that go? <laughs> they brought in they playing. You know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy. It happened to me. Yeah. I went I went from starting. And then you telling me my my senior year, my senior year. Yeah. You want me to come off the bench? Yeah. Oh, you're goofy. Oh, you're <laughs> really goofy. What? Now I'm dropping third. Every time I get up, it's my senior year. I, I'm I get what you're doing, coach. But yeah. understand this, I got. But they're not concerned about that. Mm-mm. They gotta. They gotta protect. I'm not going to say all coaches are like that because I can only speak from my experience and, and you know, what coaches were able to give to me. Right. Like, as much as you want to nurture a kid in college, mm-hmm. you could do that. But then is that is that kid going to perform? Because if you're just an assistant coach, guess what? And that's your recruit. She's not performing. Mm-hmm. Maybe your job is going to be discussed at the end of the year. And while you're being discussed and evaluated as a coach, mm-hmm. that player mm-hmm. – we're going to have somebody to fill her in and she's just going to keep, keep getting pushed. Wow. That's so true. It's, it's, it's a cold world we live in. <laughs> it's a cold world we live in in this, in this situation. Like, yeah. and I was battling with that and I, and I was doing good, man. Like you got to understand, like I did, I did it I, for what, where I came from and then being able to, go and play in a situation like I did a couple of things but it was very humbling where she said look you're gonna come off the bench yeah and let a freshman a sophomore at this point in my senior year start Mm -hmm. so so then it just again because your mentality is like you gotta you got this you feel away yeah and now you gotta prove that ain't no way this it's like that loving that loving best basketball uh clip that part you're not taking my spot 
Mm-hmm. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> and when I come, when that time comes, if it comes, you going you not, you want to be a team player, but then you gotta look out for yourself. Mm-hmm. It's right. tough. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> a whole another a whole another video just strictly off of that adversity of For real. 